Howdy, I'm Luke, Thunderhead 289 here on YouTube. Welcome to the garage here. Now, today I want to do a little walkthrough and a demonstration for you um, on a running engine on how to set up the initial settings on your ignition timing and your carburetor. So, um, I've done a lot of videos discussing transfer slots. Today we're actually going to take a look at that and then again, perform this on an actual running engine. Actually, the one that's right behind the camera there, it's a 76 F250. I just pulled it out of the woods and the weeds not very long ago, and I've been daily driving it. And I've already done this, but we're going to go back and just go through the proper method of how to set all this up. Now, as the old adage goes, timing is everything. It's often the most neglected item on these old carbureted vehicles, the most misunderstood, misadjusted you know really um, in the grand scheme of things carburetors are very forgiving uh, a lot of times carburetors get blamed for issues with ignition timing bad throttle response you know and you know there's a whole myriad of things that they end up getting blamed for so what i'm going to show you here today is how to set up your initial timing and this is a universal method that works for almost all uh, street engine builds obviously race engines I set those up a little different but most of us you know you know we drive our cars stop lights you know cruising and all that it's very important so we're gonna take a look at that today and just move right on through so let's flip the camera around and get started now I know you guys hear me harp on this time and time and time again transfer slots so um, they're pretty important as far as the dynamic functionality of a carburetor and as you move through the throttle, they need to be set a certain way from the beginning. So again, as you move through the throttle range and the different engine loads, uh, the throttle position of the carburetor and the circuit that it's on is at the proper point so that, again, everything works together uh, harmoniously between the dynamic relationship between the carburetor and ignition timing, engine load, and all of that stuff. Now, that's throwing a lot at you guys, and there's a lot of explanation there that I could talk on for a long, long time. But just to get started here, we're going to try and make this video very basic today. So let me give a still shot just so you know what I'm talking about with these transfer slots. All right, so as you see, it's just a little slotted area that handles some of the fueling transition from idle to your main jet circuit. So again, if these are overexposed, set wrong, you typically have a lean spot. And a lot of times, if your ignition timing is not advanced enough, you'll have to have these overexposed to idle at your ideal idle RPM. So again, we're going to take a look at all that stuff. Now, today, let's jump over here to our old 76. Um, now, I understand a lot of you guys are kind of afraid, you know. I guess when I was younger, I was afraid to remove a carburetor, turn it over, look at things you know that's that's kind of a tall order and you can mess a lot of stuff up so we're going to make this as easy as possible so a really good trick indicator is to put a vacuum gauge on your ported vacuum port of your carburetor now if your transfer slots are within reason you will have no vacuum on your ported port if they are overexposed you have too much throttle then your uh, your vacuum gauge will actually start showing vacuum on the ported port and that's not what you want now today ultimately we're going to utilize our ported port for our vacuum advance on our distributor now the only difference between manifold vacuum and ported vacuum if your carburetor is set up right as far as the throttle position goes is that ported vacuum does not add any vacuum advance at idle it's all mechanical initial timing now a lot of you guys are staunchly against ported vacuum um, there's a lot of misinformation that goes around out there um, you know but if, if you want to have better off idle performance um, off the line torque and just all around a better curve you're going to listen to me today and what i have to say um, and how i set this up so the biggest problem i have with manifold vacuum is that you set all your carburetor up around everything you know you're adding vacuum you're adding timing advance based on your vacuum advance canister now the first thing that happens when you tow into the throttle is your vacuum will drop and then you actually lose this ignition timing now engines respond 
very well from an immediate burst of ignition timing right off the line. That's why guys will tell you to run the lightest springs, um, you know, and all in by 2500. That's why you hear that going around because other people have noticed that they respond very well to an abrupt increase in ignition timing to a point. So basically, if you're running off manifold vacuum to set your idle settings, when you hit the throttle, you know, you just throw a bunch of timing right out the window and your carburetor was set up for having that much initial timing. So now your carburetor around that RPM point is way off base and you know, it can be band-aided with aggressive springs, but um, really, I really absolutely do not like that. Uh, the way that I've found to work very well is just to use mechanical initial timing because when you hit the throttle, you're only going to advance timing from that point. And if you're against this, please listen to what I have to say here today. You know, mark your distributor, mark everything, write it down so that you can go back to the way you had it before. But absolutely give this a shot and I bet you, you absolutely will never go back. So with that, we're going to jump in today. Um, we'll fire up the engine and I'll just go through everything with you guys. We have a vacuum. All we need is a vacuum gauge. You don't need a timing light, but I would highly recommend having one. This is a dial back unit. I highly recommend dial back units for a myriad of reasons that we won't get into today. But um, then just a half inch wrench to loosen our distributor body and a screwdriver and we should be good to go. So let me get this thing fired up and we're gonna go through these settings with you guys live today. All right, we got the old 181,000 mile 390 FE running away here. I switched out my little vacuum gauge for a larger vacuum gauge just because you can see a little minute changes a lot better the larger your gauge is and for the sake of the video I wanted to do this so you could be sure to see it. So um, hooked to the ported vacuum port obviously again we have no vacuum and we shouldn't but if you increase the throttle you'll see that vacuum does go up. So to set all this up right you need to hook a vacuum gauge first to your ported port and then make sure that you have no vacuum on that port. So this is something you want to take into account. And so basically now, once you have no vacuum on that ported port, you want to advance your initial timing until you have an ideal idle RPM. Now in a manual, you'll do this in neutral. In an automatic car, you will do this in gear with the parking brake up and preferably a buddy sitting in the vehicle with his foot on the brake and the wheels chalked because you don't want the thing running away on you. So anyway, that's just kind of a general walkthrough of how I go ahead and set things up. And it works very, very well. Now with everything hooked up in this way, I mean, we have great off idle throttle response on this engine. So we got the engine all back together and I forgot that probably we should do a driving clip. I've never done one in this truck anyway from the inside. So I got Evan holding the camera today. Again, everything's hooked back up. We're running our vacuum advance off our ported vacuum. Um, port here on the side of our Holly carburetor. Our distributor's all bolted down. 14 degrees of initial timing. We're good to go. So let's go for a little rip down the road. And I mean, throttle response is really good. Drivability is really good. Really well. Second gear at the glorified three speed. Sounds pretty good. That's all response down low. That's impressive for an F 250 with an FE. Yeah, with the towing package and towing gear. Anyway, if you had any questions, leave them below. But this is kind of what I'm getting at when I say set the transfer slots right and then run off ported vacuum and set your initial timing. That way when you rev the engine, you don't lose any timing. If anything, you're gonna just um, gain more timing. And you know, I've never seen a scenario as to why I need to pull ignition timing right when I open the throttle. So extremely good throttle response. Um, off the line drivability is far superior. And, um, you know, I recommend that you go and try this out, these settings. It's worked very well for me, and I'm sure it'll work great for you guys. All right, well, thanks for hanging out with me in the garage today and following along. The biggest takeaway I want you to have from this video 
is that carburetors are all the time blamed for ignition timing shortcomings and misadjustments. Oftentimes it's just late ignition timing in the off idle transition circuit like the accelerator pumps and whatever are blamed on a carburetor for these issues. Now one of the things that frustrates me the most with old classic cars is actually the limitations and compromises that you have to make with ignition timing that's inherent in their old school design with stop bushings and springs and, and all of that stuff, vacuum advanced canisters and, and just everything that's entailed in old school style ignition timing. So um, when I was in Vista, California, I met Ted who has a little company that he just started called Progression Ignition. Now he has a really cool deal where he uses, he has a distributor that basically he's created a module that you can interface with a phone and you can completely control each of your different timing events in your timing um, curve, every piece of your ignition timing independent of one another. So all those compromises are completely out the window. It was really cool. I don't normally promote stuff, but I sat down with him, he ran his car, he showed how he could manipulate it just with his phone while the engine was running, sitting in his driver's seat. So it was just really cool. Um, Anyway, I'll, I'll stop going on and on, but you ought to check out his website. I'll leave it below. Moving forward for the blower on this car, I'm actually, you know, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do for a distributor, and I think I'm going to use one of his. So it has a whole bunch of different features to handle boost. You know, it, it just, it has some really cool stuff on it. So I encourage you to check that out. I'll catch you next time. I got some work to do here today, and, you know, look forward to seeing you again. Catch you guys later.